Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with some more Warhammer 3 gameplay. Continuing the series focusing around all the different laws of magic that are going to be implemented with Total War Warhammer 3. We've looked at the other two demon laws and we've got one more, the Law of Zinch. A rather specialized law which is quite very potent, let's just put it that way. So let's take the time now to look at each of the individual spells, what they do and how they can be used in battle. Keep in mind as per usual that anything that you see in terms of values and so on can be changed by the time that the last patch comes out before the game is released. So we're going to be working around these in a clockwork fashion, with the first one being Zinch's Firestorm. This is a Vortex spell which does both magical and fire damage. The spell itself is a small randomly moving area of effect with three different rifts appearing and spreading outwards. The fact is that this does a lot of damage as we know that Vortexes are quite strong, but not only that, it's also got the effect of putting Warp Flame on the enemy. Many spells of Zinch do that, which increases the damage that they take from fire and also reduces their ammo seeing as pretty much the grand majority of the Zinchian roster does some sort of fire damage, you're practically putting debuffs and then being able to hit that enemy even harder, especially with, say, for example, Pink Horrors, Exalted Pink Horrors, and so on, which will be able to increase their damage output quite dramatically. So you're going to be wanting to have this debuff as much as possible. It's just something important that you guys need to know about, as obviously that's going to increase your damage output, and it's how Zinch works as a whole. The best time to use this spell is naturally when you're blobbing up the enemies, especially if you can get them all into one specific section. Choke points are fantastic for this, as it will just keep moving around and damaging different types of units. Anything with large unit entities, like say for example the Skaven, will feel the damage here, and if you can get them all, like I said, in a small area, you'll be able to get the most output from this, as the randomly moving rifts can be, well, very unpredictable, that's how it is. That being said, you see that when it does hit anything, when it does fly over anything, it does do a lot of damage and that's quite important. You want to be able to do damage because up close and personal, you're very, very squishy. You are Zinchian after all, you're not there to do damage in front. But overall, I'd say that this is quite a good spell. There are some better ones and we'll talk about that in just a second, but you can use this as long as you plan correctly. Planning is key here. Next we have Treason of Zinch. It's a hex area effect which reduces enemy leadership. However, if you overcast it, it becomes much more viable as it also reduces enemy attack. Melee attack specifically, which as you can imagine being one of the most glassiest cannon of the factions, you want to be able to not take as much damage as possible. Both effects work out quite well, I'd say that the overcasted version is better, as reducing enemy leadership isn't too much of a hassle as far as I've seen, you have a Zinchian gun line, you're able to do a lot of damage before they get too close, some of the units, a grand majority of units, if you plan out your range and your magic, will break before they even get to you. Obviously this depends on difficulty and so on, but usually it's the same scenario all the time. In the case that you are thrown into melee, however, very, very useful. As you can see here, I've got some Forsaken of Zinch in the front line. They're built to do some damage themselves. They are pretty much your only possible melee unit that's on foot, barring obviously any horses and dune knights. So I'd say that this is going to be something that you're going to be using as a front line. Now, being able to reduce the melee damage of the other units will make sure that you'll be able to keep the barrier up for longer and not take any damage whatsoever, whilst also reducing their leadership, well, that works out quite well, so you can start breaking them as soon as possible. They aren't so much of a threat here, as these are obviously peasant long spearmen, but these are my tester unit. You can see they're doing nothing. They're just not really doing a dent. They're doing nothing at all. It's a great spell and the melee damage should be there as baseline maybe in a weaker form, that's just my opinion, because really overcasting you're risking for a miscast chance and yeah, you know, nobody really wants to miscast at all. Like I said, it's got its uses, it's not the best spell in the available lore, but it definitely does have its uses. Next we have Blue Fire of Zinch, and I've been using this spell fairly often, as it's a magic missile, yes, they're not too impressive, however, it's great against, say for example, single entity monsters, so if you want to focus fire down any of those monsters, this is going to be quite useful, but it also conveys warp flame, meaning that, yeah, hit them with the magic missile, and then have every single one of your pink horrors and so on attack it too, focus fire, get them more damage because they're weakness to fire, they also have a reduction of armor and so on. The spell itself is made a bit better when you start overcasting it as it does do increased armor piercing damage. You want that with, say for example, the Sentinels of Cafe, as those are quite heavily armored and they do a lot of damage. You want to take that out before it gets to you as it's going to make you feel pain. 
So in my testing, I did it against a Cafe and Sentinel, because obviously that was the best thing to try it against. Yeah, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but it does have the capabilities. You can see, as a spell as a whole, it's not great. It's not there to snipe out characters, it's not there to really be the damaging spell, it's just there to apply a debuff, which is useful. If you've got nothing that can apply it, then you want to be able to have that at least. It's one of those spells that you're going to use because it's cheap, but that's pretty much it. I wouldn't say that this is the most important spell again. In fact, this is probably one of the weakest, as you do have better spells, which we'll be talking about very, very soon. Next we have Gleam Magic, which is rather interesting as this is specifically used against enemy spellcasters. What it does is it applies a debuff on them as a whole, which reduces their power recharge and reserves per second, whilst also increasing your power recharge and reserves per second. The best way of explaining it would be you're basically stealing their Winds of Magic, which is quite cool as, well, you know, you're a Zinchian faction, you want to use magic, magic is so important for you. You can also extend the duration itself when overcasting it, and you want to be able to just take away their magic so they can't do too much damage to yourself. Now, obviously since Warhammer 3 has a lot of magic, well the Warhammer series in general has so much magic, you might want to keep this. Yeah, it might not sound too interesting, but it is pretty good. Just for some basic examples, the Law of Zinch, the Law of Sinesh, they're both quite powerful. Even the Laws of Yin and Yang for Cafe or the Laws of Ice and Tempest, they've got some stuff that can hit you quite hard, so you're going to be wanting to steal their Winds of Magic, have it for yourself so you can cast more spells, and make them lose out on something which is a very powerful resource, especially on the battlefield. Next we have Infernal Gateway, which is a very powerful vortex. You see, it's huge, stationary in an area of effect, and it does a lot of damage. When you overcast it, it also does increased damage as armor-piercing damage, so this is going to be useful versus pretty much anything like Cornate Warriors and so on. Keep in mind that you will be doing reduced damage to them because of magical resistance. The area of the spell might not look too big when you've got the counter there, but once it gets out there, you can see it's absolutely massive. It does a lot of damage. It pretty much can melt anything that you can keep stationary there. Again, holding down your enemies or putting them in some sort of choke point is just so good. This has become one of easily my favorite spells just because, well, visually it's just wonderful. Probably one of the best spells I've seen so far, but its damage output is absolutely disgusting. Just a great spell all around. It's impressive too. The spells are clearly so much better in terms of visual, and yeah, I know visual doesn't really do anything for most things, but it does help with an aesthetic point of view. Next we have Pink Fire of Zinch, and this is pretty much your most basic spell, yet super super useful, as it's a breath weapon, which has an expanding tear shape, it does get a decent amount of area when you cast it if you can plan it well enough. It does magic on fire damage and also puts the debuff of warp flame on any enemies that it touches and if you decide to overcast it, yep, it does increase damage too. It's quite powerful. Honestly, I was surprised I didn't think that this was going to be such a useful spell, yet constantly using it, I've seen that it can do quite a bit. It's definitely the most traditional breath weapon that you can see and have access to because obviously it starts off small and starts expanding. It's able to hit quite a large radius. You can do a lot of damage, both of its standard and even overcasted variant, I'd say you're going to be using this a lot. You want to have at least one spellcaster of Zinch. I'm honestly so surprised that the spell lore of Zinch is so powerful. Keep in mind that I come back from a tabletop background where the spells weren't so great in a sense and they kind of worked against you sometimes. Obviously they weren't going to do that here and I'm really glad they didn't because I'd probably never play Zinch if that would be the case because yeah, but it's good. Honestly, I am really, really impressed. And lastly, of course, we have the passive, which is Fires of Change. This is triggered every time that you cast a spell and increases your damage resistance by a pretty decent amount. Obviously, again, protecting you at all costs. You've got a lot of stuff that has a damage output, so anything that you have that also can defend you with certain cases is going to be very, very useful. The lore itself is easy enough to explain, which is a good thing, because I think that a lot of people will get drawn to Zinch purely for the magic output, and it's not very complicated spells, it's just simple cast and go, and you can do so much damage with them. But let me know what you guys think about the lore of Zinch, and let's start a bit of a discussion. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like, or even subscribing to the channel, as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms, such as Facebook, Instagram, and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games, where you could buy loads of hobby-based products, not just Warhammer, for 10-25% off. 
making a purchase using that link and also our special code which is also in the description supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.